Bessie Smith is the greatest female blues singer who's ever lived. Born in Chattanooga, Tennessee in 1894, Bessie Smith hit the theater circuit at the age of 18, touring in minstrel shows and cabarets. She started her career as a dancer on the same bill with legendary singer Ma Rainey. Ma Rainey was always known as the ugliest woman in show business, and Bessie was not. Bessie was known as being, being beautiful. Bessie segued from dancing to singing, and her talents drew large audiences. So she created her own show. Bessie Smith's shows were often extravagant. She had as many as 40 people in the cast. Bessie's show traveled the country, and in many areas of America, segregation was the norm. In some places, there were black rooming houses, theatrical rooming houses, where they stayed. So when Bessie Smith had her own railroad car, that became their, their home away from home, and they cooked there and they slept there. Bessie's success was enormous for the time, and she was pulling in the unheard of sum of $2,000 a week. Just the whole idea that Bessie Smith and Ma Rainey were able to make a living at that time. These women were writing their stories, singing them, and making their own money, and they were emancipated women to me. They were the first feminists. Bessie understood the hard drinking, promiscuous, and violent life she sang about in the blues because she lived it. At the end of the songs, you always got this sense that despite all this, that this was a woman who was going to overcome it, and she did. By the early 1920s, Columbia Records discovered her, and she became the best-selling blues artist of her time, making almost 160 recordings, including tunes like Backwater Blues and Taint Nobody's Business If I Do. She had a good business mind. She would sell the records in the aisle. She also sold other merchandise. The Bessie Smith Show was a traveling <laughs> marketplace. When I discovered Bessie Smith, I was like, oh, that's, that's where Janice got her stuff. That's where uh, Mick Jagger, Robert Plant, everybody's been listening to Bessie Smith. I to see that evening sun go down. Smith's rich life was cut short by a car crash at the age of 43. Thousands turned out to mourn her, but she lay in an anonymous plot until rock legend and fan Janis Joplin bought her a headstone several decades later. She had a swagger. She had a incredible, booming voice. Rock and roll is rhythm and blues, and it came from the blues of Bessie Smith. Bessie Smith really captured everything that's happening in her life. <laughs> it's about her desire to be loved and trying to find the things she really wanted. All rock and roll, jazz, etc., is based on these American blues. And she felt a lot of pain sometimes, and she felt a lot of joy. I think there are a lot of things that people can relate to that were happening then that are still happening now. Bessie is so unique. I have such a great amount of respect for her and her voice, the power of her voice, her ability to convey the blues to audiences and really touch them. She just had a thing that no one else had. This appreciation of the blues that we have comes from that early recordings, those early blues that really just came from a place of pain. And you hear that in her songs. You can track her life through her songwriting. Everyone's reference to Bessie Smith's music is from the recordings from the 20s. And so my excitement was the idea that we're going to bring what you know of the audio, the confines of 1920s technology that made it sound like a 1920s record. 
that we were gonna be able to transcend all that and get to shed all of the limitations and bring a whole new audience, her music, right to your door. I feel the best way to know an artist is to look at their work. And so I started out specifically by looking at the songs that Bessie herself wrote. And from there, I tried to piece together a narrative um, of her life. The first conversation I had with Queen Latifah was about being authentic, about being the blues, and about feeling real. And we started the music by taking exact transcriptions, literally note for note down, of every instrument that played on every song that we were doing. So you had all the parts. We got Buck Washington, Chu Berry, and this is Benny Goodman. Such an honor. And then we built around that. As soon as we started recording and she started showing up at the studio, she was Bessie Smith. She wasn't Queen Latifah anymore. It's been very challenging to work on the music for this film because Bessie has a completely different voice than I do. We've tried to capture the sound of the blues of that period. The way she stylized things, whether it's the grit she would put into it or what I feel her spirit really would be, you know, the essence of who she is. So I'm doing my best to take those songs and interpret them in the way that I can. For me, in coming to the story, I feel like Ma Rainey was like my way in. You know, I feel like you couldn't talk about Bessie unless you talk about Ma. Ma has a quiet power where Bessie drives forward, and they're both equally powerful, but different ways. We've been Women Blues works twofold. One, it's our introduction to Ma Rainey musically. Monique is just a dynamo. It also is a turning point in the relationship between Bessie Smith and Ma Rainey. All I ask you for is respect. Bessie and Ma were performing at a time when the last thing that this country wanted was a black female entertainer. We're still dealing with the unbalance of race in the entertainment business. You still have people fighting to say, we refuse to let you be who you were made to be. Get on out of here! Hey! Bessie was fearless. For a black woman in her time, she absolutely did not conform in any way, shape, or form. Where it was dealing with white society, or black society, or regular black life, she did not and would not behave as one was, in theory, supposed to do. And really, for all of her craziness in terms of behavior, she always came back to being a survivor. And that is the reason why she endured. She endured even after death, just from the strength of the music, but previous to that, because she was a survivor. It's a long road. Her music was so strong-willed, and there's so much narrative in her music. She sings about Jack G. She sings about all these things. She sings about class and race, and, and Dee was really purposeful that way. It takes a lot to go and try to portray someone who didn't have a lot of boundaries, you know, because I think it requires going there yourself. Blues really is an emotional vehicle. That's really what it's about. And Queen Latifah has done an amazing job in her singing to evoke the emotion of the lyrics and invoke the emotion of the scene that we're in when she's singing those lyrics. It's something special to really hear someone whose voice can cut through a room full of people. People singing the song, you know, mu musicians playing, and this one voice is singing above everybody. They were amazing. Bessie Smith was amazing. Her musicians were fantastic. Free-spirited, improvising, it it's beautiful. I think it's the first time that Bessie Smith's music will be realized for everyone to hear. She just has such power that comes through, and that's what we really want to make sure people feel and see.